Okay, I think we're going. What's up, everybody? Ken here, also known as Silent85. I'm currently on a break at work. Uh, forgive the quality of the video, as well as how I look. It's been a crazy day. I barely slept last night, but I wanted to make a vlog on something that um, some people may click with. Others may see it from the other side and wonder. Um, and I wanted to talk about being uh, a non-believer in religious aspects. Um, and a few pillars of why that has come about in my life. Uh, I was raised Christian. I was abused as a kid uh, by a Christian leader. Um, as I got older, I learned to, I developed more as a critical thinker. Um, my curiosity kept growing and growing. Um, I was obviously very smart as a kid, and I'm not tooting my own horn. Um, I got bored with school um, because uh, I, I didn't see it as challenging. And because of that, I really do think it was a setback for me because I ended up dropping out. Um, I was homeschooled for a bit, and then I got my GED. Thereafter, I started working and started going from there. So any any curiosity, any intelligence, any information I came about was not um, uh, higher learning uh, in, an, in an institution or an academy or a school. So basically everything that I've come about within my life when it comes to intelligence and whatnot has been learned from books, um, you know, information – uh, gaming insights into that, um, you know, experience, so on and so forth, and wisdom and analyzing history and all kinds of stuff. And that's that's where I came about with the pillar of my understanding and my mental uh, bearing that historically we have had thousands upon thousands of gods that have affected society, that have affected communities, that has affected all kinds of things. And we're currently still in that. We're currently still in that stage for humanity. Let me up. There we go. Uh, too hot. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Okay. So, and it's back where it was, whatever. Uh, we're currently still in that stage with humanity. Um, and a lot of people find comfort and strength in this. Personally, I don't. I find it in myself. Um, I don't need a, um, a deity to help back that up. Because I do believe in myself, and it's a little. <laughs> My apologies. Eh, it's back where it was, but whatever. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, we are where we are. Um, but I, I find that in myself. You know, I, ha I haven't needed a de de deified backup or uh, emergency hotline in order to do so. Um, but in a lot of people worldwide, it does help them. You know, it helps them better understand the universe in some ways, why things happen, uh, hope for things happening, so on and so forth. But I think at the same time, it also blunts people um, when it comes to having confidence in themselves, uh, when it comes to finding peace within themselves, because th there's two things that I've noticed within Christians growing up as I did. Is that number one, you're up against a measuring stick when it comes to Jesus Christ and trying to match who he was. Um, he was he was human uh as as he walked this earth according to the teachings but at the same time he was the son of god uh, i don't necessarily believe if you look at the uh text itself including going all the way back to the hebrew um he wasn't god himself he was the son of god you know much like the bible states we're all children of god right so how do you how do you equal that out like is jesus middle management up to god or so on and so forth there, there's a lot of um translations that state either way um but I think there's also, you know, there's also other books and teachings, including the um, uh, Mary's point of view, the uh, uh, Jesus's companion throughout his trials, um, not his mother. And uh, it states that one of the books that is notoriously omitted from the Bible or left out that, um, you know, he God was just a teacher. He was or Jesus was just a teacher. He was it was to show that to to find inner peace with yourself, to be kind to everyone so on and so forth and never really gave jesus proof as being like this gateway to get into heaven you know because again that's a measuring stick isn't it i mean that's a very high bar um and so it really what it tends to do is cause a lapse of what i've seen and some people and again just my my input and insight in it to me personally it causes this measuring stick to make you feel like you'll never get there, or you got to constantly spend your life 
trying to get there, you know. Um, but on the other side of it, it does give people hope. Now, put that in relation to, let's say, um, a father-son relationship, right? The To the son, the father is perfect. The father is his hero. The father is this and that. Um, and the father is a good father, but at the same time, he expects so much out of his child. He expects them to do this, to do that, to do this and do that. The the father is constantly giving reassurement, but at the, on the other hand is saying, unless you do this, you're not good enough. You know, unless you're going to do this, you know, you can't be with me in the afterlife. You know, it's it's not this, like, I accept you for who you are. I accept you as you are, you know. Fundamental Christians, Christians especially if you go off the Bible, uh, believe that you're going to burn in hell if you don't match up to where Jesus is. Lake of fire, condemnation, burning for all eternity. But I love you. It's it, it's crazy. That that's a uh, that's a stand up bit by a stand up comedian, but it proves a point. Um, so anyway, it, you look at that. You look at Roman gods, Greek gods, Indian gods, um, ancient Aztec gods, so on and so forth, and it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. So when I looked at that, I was like, I, I don't. How do you you know how do you justify believing that when they believed everything and you know they're Prophets and whatnot never really came to be, you know. The other thing is, too, is that when you look at prophecy, right, major events can happen, and then, and this is just conspiratorial, but major events can happen. And then you go back, and you, you kind of look at it, and it's like, who's to say that since this happened, there wasn't some, like, ancient text, quote-unquote, found that could have been placed uh, thereafter to prove this was prophecy, you know. So, um, on the part of Jesus, where I fall with that, I believe that there may have been uh, an individual that preached a good message and then people deified him because he did make a difference in their life. Um, but at the same time, in early centuries, there was all kinds of messiahs and prophets, oracles, and you know, so on and so forth. And it seems like the lucky few, the ones that had the most impact because they really clicked with people because they did have this way about them, the way they could talk, the way they could present their people, you know. You have preachers, common nowadays, that do a, do a great job leading people, uh, building communities, so on and so forth, because people love them. You know, they look to them for guidance, but I think humanity has learned since then not to take these people and deify them, make them into gods, so on and so forth. Now, you do have your cults here and there that do do that, but I think in general, general society doesn't do that. Back in the day, it was done a hell of a lot. But there was a few throughout the centuries that these communities over time built and became very, very, very powerful. And they learned that they could perpetuate this idea of this idol or deity and say, we can use this for marketing. We can use this for publishing. We can use this for money making. Uh, we can build communities and teach certain ways because we want humanity to go that way. Uh, Old Testament, homophobic, um, matricidal, patricidal, you know, stone your fellow brother. Um, you own your wife, you own slaves, all this and that. But then Jesus comes in and everything, you know, for the most part changes, but at the same time he preaches that old law is still the, the current law. There's all these contradictions because over the years, there's been these changes that keep trying to happen and they're trying to keep control, right? Now again, just input from what I've seen. But here's the key thing that really affects me in life as to where I stand now. I feel like people of my own mental standing have to walk on eggshells um, because you feel quieted, you feel dismissed in some ways when you give your side of things to devout believers, to believers even with you know a mildly open mind because on my part too, I feel guilty even talking about where I stand in front of in front of Christians, in front of believers because I'm scared that anything I say or anything I think about and present a theory or present a thought could have an impact on them, on their faith, could cause a crisis of faith, you know, and it could go one of two ways. One, they double down, you know, this is how I believe, this is what I think, this is what I was taught, or they do have that crisis of faith. And when you're a believer and you start having a crisis of faith and it starts to go deep, you lose foundations in your life. 
This is something I had to go through because that's how I was brought up. So that programming was put in here, um, in some ways in here. And yes, it taught me good lessons. You know, it helped me be a better person. Um, although I like to believe I was always a good person by nature. And as a kid, I was always told I was very caring, very generous, very loving, um, very smart, you know, very curious. Um, and I was abused for that in my younger age. So I'm actually really proud of myself for continuing to be who I was. Um, but, you know, you, when you have a crisis of faith, you lose part of your identity. You start to question a whole lot. And it's totally normal. It is totally normal to be curious and to question. But when you're around people and you have to walk on eggshells with how you talk and how you present your ideas and intellect and, you know, you try to talk with people in like an open conversation, depending on their level of faith or where they're at with with that in their lives, you really can't, again, in, in, my, in my case, um, I'm scared. I'm scared of having a negative impact on that person's life. But at the same time, I'm also contradicted because I'm just like, I shouldn't have to hold back on what, you know, I, I bring to the conversation or what I, I bring to um, my life or the people around me, including my loved ones. Uh, because there's a lot of times where I can hear people go, you know, go on and on about the blessings in their life, what God's doing for them, what they found, this and that. And then on the other side of it, I'm just like, you know, how, how can I amount to what's happened in my life because of things I've done, because of things I've made happen, or because, you know, the universe has the things that worked my way, you know, and it's really just another way of saying it. I mean, when you look at the universe provided or, um, you know, this thing happened that really helped my life that I wasn't expecting, it's, you know, people equate it to providence, this power of God, this plan of God and all that. Um, when, you know, at, at the core, it's just this thing that came into your life out of nowhere that you either hoped for or prayed for or whatnot, or didn't even think about and didn't realize how much it could positively benefit you. Um, but it's all the same. It's all the same. You just put a different wrapping on it, right? So when, when you're, when you're trying to be who you are and you're like-minded like I am in that regard, it's very hard to try to keep who you who you are when you want to be yourself around people that you love, people that you respect, people that you don't want to have a negative impact on. Um, and I, I guess really what it comes down to is that people of faith, people of church, people of God, um, they have something that they feel they can brag about. They have something that they feel they can spread a message with. They have something that gives them strength that they want to shout from the rooftops, that they want to worship, that they want to give thanks to on a daily basis, every hour, every minute. Um, and it's the same for me and myself. The problem is with some people, when you present that to yourself, they will question it and be like, well, don't you give that to God? I'm like, no, I give it to me. And you're discounting me by saying that God was responsible and I wasn't. It takes away from who you are. It takes away from your own personal empowerment. Um, and I think that needs to be realized. And even even as the individual, that this that it, it affects me negatively when I can't really talk about how I see things or how I think about things without fear of impacting somebody in a negative way to cause them to have a potential question in their life that could cause a ripple effect and cause them to lose that faith. Um, and it could cause them to lose confidence and to lose a drive for life and to lose their love for what they believe in, especially late in life. It's all you got. You know, it's, it's all you got. As I get older, all I'm going to have is myself and my intellect and the people around me, that, you know, that love me, the people I still have in my life as I get older. Um, but I also know that when I'm gone, at base science evidence, I'm rejoining the earth. Rather I'm cremated, rather I'm buried, rather I just die in a ditch somewhere and decay, I'm rejoining the planet. My body becomes fertilizer. The fertilizer goes into the ground. Future animals eat the ground um, and then <laughs> eat the stuff growing from the ground. Those animals are eaten by... Um, my predecessors are later in the human race, 
it's all a part of a cycle. It's all a part of something greater. That's where I lie. That's what I find. Um, some strength in. It doesn't profoundly affect who I am. But it's totally... There's total evidence for that happening. It, it happens all around us. Every day. Um, and I like I like to... I'm stuck in that reality. And I think to, to think otherwise is, is to give disservice to what our ancestors have gone through, to what they fought for, all the way back to apes, all the way up to where we are now. Um, and either way, whether it's spiritual or not, we're at some level rejoining our ancestors. So, anyway, look, it, it can be tough. Uh, when you live your life a certain way, and you're surrounded by a certain type of thinking and belief, um, and there are days you just want to be like, why, I, why can't I just be who I am without this fear of causing a weight in somebody else's life? And, and there's people that are like-minded like me that just don't care. I mean, they'll just throw it out there, you know. But um, I find myself pulling back a lot because I don't want to go full bore. Um, and again, the balance in it to where what I can do and what I can't do or what, how I feel so on the um, other end people that shout about their faith, that preach about it, talk about it, blessings left and right, and there's a part of me that's just, I get it, but at the same time, you're discounting yourself, you're discounting the person that helped you, you're discounting the um, events in your life that led to it, you know. That's how I see it, that's how I feel, that's what I've experienced, that's what I, to this day, continue to experience, um, with friends, family, um, contacts previous you know people in my life um and it's a weight it's a weight to carry but at the same time i think a lot of the time it's worth it because messing with somebody's life or somebody's perception in in a in a personal conversation whether it's an open debate or you get angry and you say something or something for me that that's a weight that i i think i'm gonna have to bear because people mean a lot to me and and i don't want to one-on-one -on -one contact not like the videos where I, I share my own opinion no matter what uh because people can choose to watch it or not um you know that that's a weight i carry and i'm gonna continue to do so but it's not easy um and i, I know from a christian standpoint it's not easy to see somebody deny god and especially if they're a loved one and you go with fundamental christian teachings to know that they're not going to get into heaven with you. But at the same time, realize that as a Christian, and if you're seeing that, realize that to that person, they know they're going to go someplace to where every human goes that has always gone as long as we've been on this earth. We will rejoin our ancestors on some manner of speaking. We'll rejoin the earth. And in the end, we know that things will carry on. It, it's a heavy weight to bear when... Again, you, you believe what you believe, and you know that the people that deny your beliefs and teachings will not end up where you think they will, where you hope they will. But at the same time, realize that person has their other thing going on that gives them hope and strength, and that they know whatever happens, you know, it's, it's going to end up somewhere to where we naturally belong. So anyway, 20 minutes on this video almost. This is not exactly something to really talk about like within a five minute video as i do with these vlogs and i wanted to share this and, and again maybe it gives some people hope you know maybe it doesn't um but i like to share my mindset and let people know what's going on so anyway stay safe stay sane remember you're awesome never let the world tell the lies and i'll see you later peace